That's why he is in the history books. Mark Tushar. It's a great honor. Um, it's, it's, ver it's great to be successful. You know, everybody want to be with winners. Nobody want to be with losers. But to be the first in history, I really don't know how I feel right now because I'm still doing it. I'm still boxing. I, I read about it. But until I get in the Hall of Fame and until I be able to be 50 and 60 and look back, then I understand it. Right now, I'm just, I'm just doing what, I, what God gave me here to do, and that's become a great fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring to the stage the big man with a big heart. Might come a little size, but he's ready to do it. Mark Tushok Johnson. From 115 to 120 pounds, Mark Tushok Johnson is one of the best ever. And the D.C. native is making what he calls a homecoming. I think it's a compliment to not just the kids, but to everybody who, who around the Washington, D.C. area see me running, see me in the gym, but... Um, don't have the opportunity to come and see Mark Johnson live fight. Um, they're watching it on TV. So um, it's, a, it's definitely something great for them to wear, the, wear as though they can come to the fight and see me live and in living color. In living color. So that's the main focus here. The main focus is um, staying busy, staying hungry, and I guess I'm um, making sure that everybody come out in the Washington, D.C. area that finally can touch me to go, I go on to having a great fight. I'm anxious and I'm just ready to go to get a fan in the Washington, D.C. area, a great show. Johnson is a role model for many of today's top fighters. Recently, he spoke with one of his biggest fans. It came in the like of junior lightweight Nate Campbell. And Mark appreciates any time he can inspire. Not only Nate Campbell, but if you, if you look at the tapes on Lennox Lewis, they asked him, what fighter do you like to watch? What fighter do you, you know, you, you sit in front of the TV screen an hour before a fight? And Lennox Lewis said, Mark Tushop Johnson. For that to come from an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, one of the best heavyweights in the world, along with, you know, Nate Campbell, along with uh, Antonio Tarver, Zab Judah, and all those guys, give me the props that, hey, you're the best left hand in the world, regardless of I'm a left hand. That makes me feel great. It, it makes me feel like my accomplishment is great. It makes me feel like, hey, my dad gave me the right skills. My dad sent me the right way. And not only with me, he gets a lot of uh, accomplishments as well. And it's just a great feeling because I know that we're the best father and son in boxing. You had Shane Mosley and Jack Mosley. They broke up. You had Zab and his father. They're, they're a good team. But nobody has been with me the way my dad has been since an amateur, since the age of five years old. And I would, I would guess that we are the best father and son team in the history of boxing right now. Um, a lot of people say father and sons don't make it. We made it. We're still making it. And the difference is that inside the gym is a coach. Inside the house is a father. Outside of boxing, it's just that we're, we're best friends. And that's why I know we're the best father and son. And it's a great accomplishment for great fighters to say, hey, Mark Johnson is one of the best. And they love to watch me. It's just it's great. Mark is taking on a tremendous gamble in this fight, and he's willing to roll the dice. What I plan to do, sir, was to come out and give everybody a great show. Now I plan to give everybody a good boxing lesson. <laughs> Mark Johnson has everything to lose come Saturday. Um, this is something that I really wanted my whole career is to unify the titles. The negotiations started two days ago. So it looked like Mark Johnson to be unifying the titles in October on the Trinidad My Yoga Show. So this is, this is something that Mark Johnson has never been able to look down the line and say, okay, this is what I'm going to get next. So if I get cut, if I get hurt, then my dream is out the window. At first, I was coming in to give my fans a great showing. Um, I was coming in to sit down and get this guy out of there, knock this guy out. Now, change your plans. Outbox him, have fun. Don't get hurt. And it's the same situation that Bernard Hopkins was in when he fought Robert Island. He made the fight easy, but it was boring. But he won, but he looked forward to the De La Hoya show. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing. He's going to sleep, buddy. He's going to sleep. Yeah, he's going to sleep. He's going to sleep. And I'm ready to go. Champ, too there sharp. he is. Too <laughs> sharp. Johnson, that's the man. He's a little man. 115 pounds is going to come into this fight. 122 pounds. Mark Two Sharp Johnson. That's our man, and he's going to be in the ring to do his thing. Just moments from now, and you can see him. 
You talk about a guy that wants to get it done. He's in that ring now. And he's got a bunch of kids. This is a family affair for Mark Tushop Johnson. And you know what is? I talked to him and he says, I'm so emotional about this running. I have an opportunity to come home and fight. And Antonio, I'm sure you'd like to defend that title back in Florida one day. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I think he's he's really excited. He said he was a little bit nervous because he had to perform in, in front of uh, your hometown crowd, and I know how that that feels. You know, it's it's uh, more nerve-wracking being in front of uh, your hometown than it is being away from them because you know anything can happen. All right, our fighters in the ring. We've got Polino Villalobos and we've got Mark Tushop Johnson. Let's go to the voice of choice, the ever popular Henry Discombobulated Jones. Time to the business, though. She's <laughs> hey, Tony O, Tony O, promotions and absolute entertainment in association with La Cerveza Mas Fina, Corona, the crown king of beers, and the hobo shop proudly presents our co-featured about of the evening, the return of the champ as he looks forward to the unification glory that awaits him down the road, but not overlooking his man tonight who could spoil his title shot dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds in the Super Bantamweight Division. This proud is sanctioned by the Maryland State Athletic Commission, Executive Director Patrick Pinella, Chairman David J. Norman, Commissioner Bill McCaffrey, and Phil Feaster. Council, Mr. Bruce C. Spitzler. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. When the bell rings, the man, give the instructions after introductions, referee Kenny Chavayer. Introducing the principals first. Fighting out the blue corner, he's wearing the colors of his native flag, green, yellow, and white. He weighed in at a fit fighting and ready, 119 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, in his career, a deceptive one, as he suffered split decision losses to world champions. Fernando Montiel, Rosendo Alvarez, he also recently fought our very own Clarence Vinson. His record, 24 victories, 24 defeats, with 18 big KOs to his credit, originally from Vera Cruz, Mexico, now fighting out of Fort Myers, Florida, with an upset victory tonight. He scores one last shot at title glory. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paulino Elgato Villalobos. And his opponent fighting out the red corner. He really needs no introduction the world over, but we give it to him tonight out of the respect that he's earned. Wearing the yellow and white trunks he weighed in at a lean and mean 123 pounds. His outstanding world-class professional record. 43 big victories against three defeats, 28 big KOs to his credit. He first made history by being the first African-American to win the flyweight title. The first African-American to win the junior bantamweight title. And after a hiatus, he has now become champion once again. Ladies and gentlemen, when his career is over, he's a lock for the International Boxing Hall of Fame. But that time is not yet. Welcoming back to the nation's capital, ladies and gentlemen, here is the three-time and defending WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, Mark Tushar Johnson. Kenny Chavalier to give the final instructions. Vila Lopez. Vamanos. Put it in your left hand. If you like. <laughs> there you have it, Mark Tushar Johnson, 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 the former Ham. flyweight, junior bantamweight, and super flyweight champions of the world, the first African-American ever to hold those titles in the history of all of professional boxing. He's taking on Polino Villalobos. And Villalobos says, I have come here to do some damage. But Mark is thinking about the future, just like Bernard Hopkins did against Robert Allen. And that's very hard and very happy to take him to the ring, Antonio. Yeah, I think it, it sets him up uh, to get caught by this guy that's trying to come in and make a name off of Too Sharp. Johnson. I uh, also want to note that it's very rare that you can honestly say that you're witnessing a future Hall of Famer in action. 
uh, Mark Tushop Johnson is that guy. Why do so many fighters like yourself respect what this man has done? I mean, let's face it, he has overcome some tremendous obstacles both inside the ring and out. 